remember, you can always listen to us during your private time. Hello, Kinky and King Cures folk out there. My name is Sir Inc. Coming from cold, cold, cold Philadelphia. But I've come to bring you another hot topic. Very difficult one called loving your body. Loving your body. Right? That is such a tough subject. Such a tough subject. But let me um we'll go over some points that I'm going to make. Some 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 things I'm going to cover underneath this subject. Uh, sexual desiring can only go as far when you don't have good self-esteem. That is so true. Like, you have to see yourself as being desirable. You have to look in the mirror and see yourself as attractive. If you don't, no one else will. And this has nothing to do with body style, skin color, hair, hairstyle, all this kind of stuff. Because you've met people who are drop dead gorgeous or, or, you know, man pretty or just so, you know, or just a handsome man. When you talk to them, you're like, damn, they got no confidence. They don't even think they're attractive. You know, it could be a woman with a banging body and she's like, oh, I'm fat here, I'm fat there. You're like, yo, you're crazy. It's all up here. Self-esteem is a mindset. You know, it's a mindset. Being Feeling desirable or being desired is like when you look at yourself, if you don't think it look good, then work on it. I know it ain't easy, but work on it. You know, People are going to react to you. The world reacts to you off of how you think. If you don't think you're attractive, then the world is going to see you as that. Even if someone finds you attractive, you will find a way of making yourself unattractive to them. And trust me, I've been there. I know how this goes. You've heard me talk about it before. You know, I had a young lady talk about all the things she didn't like about herself. Those were her hangups. They weren't my hangups about her. And I told her, like, yo, you just really just made yourself, you make yourself unattractive, not by the things that you're pointing out that are flaws about yourself physically, but the fact that you're pointing them out. Like, why would you do that? Especially if your partner doesn't have a problem with it, why would you keep pointing those things out? Because you have a problem with it. Okay, fine. You have a problem with it, then do something about it. Do something about it. You know, because what I would want is a confident woman, you know, because I don't have a problem with it. But now she's bringing that problem into the bedroom. You know, I might want to do a different position. He said, oh, I don't want you to see. I want you to see that uh, those dimples in my booty, whatever the case may be. Like, yo, I mean, come on, man. I'm trying to get it in. Like when we having sex, we trying to go full force. We're not trying to stop and change angles and not look. And no, 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 no. Let's do it with the lights on, you know. That's all a matter of confidence. And then, you know, I've had a, a bigger woman who didn't give a shit about, you know, if she was overweight, uh, in shape, not in shape. She like, look, we're going to do it. We're going to get it in. I don't care what you say. Pull it out. Let's go. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, you know, sexual desiring can only go as far as your, as your self-esteem. You got to have that self-esteem. You got to want to see yourself as king of the jungle or you know jane of the jungle whatever the case may be <laughs> right i mean you gotta see yourself as like being this sexual goddess man or this king of king of romance or king of sexuality something you know but you can't see yourself um as feeble and then want to deal with other people and expect to have a healthy sexual lifestyle that's just uh not going to happen. I mean, it can happen, I guess, some kind of way, but good luck with that. Uh, remember your own skin. You cannot change yourself. You cannot change yourself in some ways, right? I mean, yes, you can change yourself through, like, surgeries and things of that nature, but, like, Changing yourself, you have to accept who you are 
and how you were born. You were born to be and look the way you do, right? And then we can alter ourselves through diet and working out things of that nature, you know, change your hair up, things, things like that. But, you know, going a little bit further, like surgeries and all that is a little too much. Some of it is just people just need to accept who we are, who we were born to be. You know, um, from a scale from one to 10, most people are five or sixes, we're, we're average. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, it's just that these societal norms, um, these things that society push on us that which they deem as beautiful or handsome or what you should be or the lifestyle you should live those are projections by hollywood those projections are projections by corporate america they want to sell you shit they want to sell you products they want to sell you surgeries they want to sell you food you know all kind of nonsense you know so be careful be careful about not accepting yourself not accepting yourself is a is a hard thing, man. It's a rough life to live because you will never see any good in life if you don't see good in yourself. <laughs> Establish a healthy routine with yourself. Yes. Establish a healthy routine. How do you do that? What's a healthy routine? A healthy routine looks like a friend of mine. She would write, she wrote on her stand-up mirror, six affirmations for herself and all on the edges of her mirror. And then in the middle was open so she could see herself. That routine of her seeing those affirmations made her walk through her day a certain kind of way, right? A healthy routine is maybe putting that perfume on every day when you don't have any real reason to, you know, like I'm trying to do a better job at just using some, like some cologne on a regular day. Normally, if I'm just my day off and I'm just going to the stores or anything like that, I'm not going to, I normally don't put cologne on, but now I spray myself once or twice, you know, just self care, just make them make myself feel better. And the thing is, I don't. I didn't really see that as a big deal, but now when I go out and I'm in a store, the young lady, hey, hey, that smells good. What you got on? Now that started a conversation. Now, now there's a conversation with a young lady who's like desirable, or maybe she's not. Maybe she's flirting with me. That makes me feel good, right? So that works into your self esteem. That works into your self image, right? It all part of your self esteem. It's all part of your image, you know. Um, May go to the gym. I'm working out, you know, and uh got a little smell of goods on. Not too much, just enough, right? Just a little bit. They like, oh, you know, look at them arms on you, you know, look at them, look at them guns. Come on, you know, I'm then, you know, I got but my, my muscles ain't so big, but you know, look at your guns or whatever the case may be. What do you work out? You work out often, all that kind of stuff, like, and it makes you feel good when people recognize you, you know. That sit may make them see you and say something else about your appearance, you know? So all that plays a factor. All that plays a factor. How do you define self-love? I personally define self-love one way. I'm gonna tell you one way I define self-love. Not dealing with people that don't value who I am as I show myself self-love every day. If I'm talking to someone for the first time and they don't really see me as being valuable they see me as just some some joe blow that's fine that's not their fault it'll be my fault for trying to prove myself to someone who doesn't see me as valuable from the beginning you have to see yourself as being valuable seeing yourself as being valuable shows self-love but if you're a person who doubts who you are doubts your ability Doubts yourself, your self worth, your your looks, so on and so forth. Then it allows people to come into your life and take advantage of you for the value that you have, for the value that you don't see. And then by the time you really see it, you feel abused. But you've allowed the abuse to go on. See how that works? So understanding what value is. What do you 
find yourself being valuable? Like, what do you find valuable of yourself? Because those are the things that you will want to partner value to, to, to find valuable, right? Like, I could deal with someone and they could be a very valuable person, right? They could have a lot of value, but their value isn't something that works for me. It may not work for me. So like now I got to find somebody that's worked, their values work with my values and where I'm trying to go with things. And that doesn't make that person invaluable. It doesn't make them not worthy of me. It doesn't make them, you know, um, bad. It just makes that person's um, characteristics, their, um, their, their value points. It's, it's just not relevant to me. And maybe mine aren't relevant to them. I mean, I've dealt with, you know, I've built myself up to be this dude, the solid man. And then there's some women that don't find that valuable. And that's fine. Like, I don't find it offensive. It's cool. As long as you're not trying to hang around and use me for none of that shit. That's, that's the only problem I would have. You're trying to hang and bang and, and use me. Like, that's the problem. But other than that, you know, all fair and love and war. Um. Uh, Watch feel-good movies to remember self-love is the foundation of ourselves. You can watch movies. You can listen to music. You can read books. You can write. Whatever it is that centers you in self-love, that reminds you of the kind of love that you have for yourself, you know, like some of these movies, let's just say The Pursuit of Happiness, Will Smith's movie, right? It's about a father, single father, striving to make it. And when no one else believes him, he believes in himself. And he works his way from being this guy scrambling with these, with this briefcase, with these nutty little machines into working his way into a... um a well-run organization. He becomes a very successful man. But there were trials and tribulations along the way. But I may watch that movie because I've been a single father who struggled, who's made his life happen, right? And that watching that makes me feel good. It makes reassures me that there are other people like me that struggle and also that I you know that reaching heights of success comes with the struggle. You know, and so, yes, you can watch movies, you can you can listen to music and all those things that talk about going through things and, you know, how valuing yourself or loving yourself and believing in yourself got you to where you wanted to be, you know, taking yourself from someone who a woman left to being a, one of the most desirable men in, the you know, in your industry or in your country or in the country or in life in general, being part of that 10 percent. Uh, people who make over a hundred thousand, so on and so forth, you know, becoming a multimillionaire, you know, all those kind of things. Uh, do not define yourself by your size and jeans, the scale, whether you dress up or dress down. Yes. Do not define yourself by societal norms. The only caveat to this, I would say when it comes to the scale is if you are defining yourself by the scale, make it because the scale says you're either obese or so far underweight that it's not healthy. Other than that, if you're happy with a little wiggle to your, to a little, a little jiggle to your wiggle, and if you cool with being slim or thin, great, rock out. But if it's unhealthy, then you want to take a different stance. But let's not define ourselves on societal norms and what Hollywood and TV projects as sexy, beautiful, handsome, and things of that nature. Because again, from a scale from one to 10, most people are average. What you see on TV a lot of times is above average people. They want us to chase down the Kim Kardashians. 
They want us to look good like George Clooney or Will Smith or, um, you know, all these actors that they push in front of us is saying, like, these are sex symbols. This is the sexiest man alive and this is the sexiest woman alive. Like, fine, defined by who? Because Angela Jolie is a very attractive woman to me, but someone else may not find her attractive. You know, I like Salma Hayek. Some people may think Salma Hayek, not so much. I like Michelle Obama. Some people may say, nah, not at all. So beauty is truly in the eye of the beholder. And we have to understand that the beholder is not the people that are projecting this shit on TV. It is you. So if there's something about yourself you don't like, again, like I said, fix it. If you're in a place where you're unhealthy, whether it be physically or mentally, work on that. Get yourself right there. But other than that, do not be defined by societal shit, you know? Because again, most people are average. Average people normally date average people, and that's okay. Find yourself, love yourself, and it's okay. You'll find somebody to come along and be in it with you. But trying to chase societal norms, you know, getting surgeries to adjust yourself so you can be more attracted to, to, the, to a wider mass of people. I mean, yeah, you can do that. But that also talks about your love, your lack of self-love sometimes. Now, I'm not saying all plastic surgery is bad because, you know, women are getting their, 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 their breasts done and getting these Brazilian butt lifts, which is, okay, you want to get your, your breast lifted or you want to get a little augmentation, okay? You want to get your booty lifted a little bit? Um, okay. Okay. I'm not dissing that at all. Um, but sometimes going too damn far. You know, now they're going so huge and so huge and so small. You look like a cartoon character. Now, some guys look at that and be like, ooh, ah, because guys will want to have sex with you, right? But they don't necessarily want to marry you or bring you to the Christmas party because mm, there's a lot going on there. You know, as a guy, like, man, I want to get a bigger chest. I'm going to just go to the gym work out on my chest, right? My chest ain't getting no bigger, okay? I'm a slim dude. My chest is getting no bigger. No matter what I've done, my chest is not really going to get that bigger. To get a little bit more cut and defined, but it's not going to get much bigger. I damn sure am not going to take my hard-earned money and go out and buy me no chest implants so my chest will be sticking out like this. I'm not going to be like this. T-shirts, you know, I see guys, chest all popping, you know, shoulders big and broad, you know, but that's that man's physique. My dad was a shorter stocker dude, cut up the fine, chest sticking out, shoulders broad. You know, he was a, you know, a well-fit dude, track star the whole nine. That's just not my body style. My body style is taller and slimmer. And I just, it, I just roll with it. Now, when I see guys and they bodies all popping like body by Jake, I mean, hey, I'm like, I admire it, but I'm not about to go crazy to go have that. You know, I'm just accepting where I'm at. And I'm cool with it. You know, I attract the people that I attract and and I repel whoever I repel, whatever the case may be. I don't give a shit. I'm living my life for me. That's my self-love swag. Uh, treat yourself to massages, anything that will help your self-care. So me, myself, me, myself, and I, Boy, do I love me some me. Hashtag T.O. I love me some me. And how do I love me? I love me enough to take myself out to dinner once a week, to buy myself a drink while I'm out having dinner by myself, to have a moment to sit in, sit in silence, to have people around me, maybe talking, but no one talking directly to me unless they're serving me. Like that kind of silence for a person that works in a in a in a in a business that deals with interacting with people from eight o'clock to eight o'clock at night. Always talking to people, how you doing? What's your day like? What do you want? Blah blah blah, blah blah blah, blah 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 blah. And just random people being able to walk into your business and just talk and influence the environment. Like that can be very taxing, especially in today's times with COVID and people are so triggered 
people are so triggered by who the president is or what's going on with Russia and the United States and all this other stuff. Like, it's vaccinated, unvaccinated, uh, mass, no mass. It's so much crap that I need to decompress. And so my form of self-care is taking myself to dinner every Friday night. Sometimes I'll invite a friend, sometimes I won't. And the friend that I invite is very carefully selected. Cannot be a person that over fucking talks. Will not have that. No, 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 no. Also, too, I like getting massages. So one week on a Monday, I'll go get a massage. On the opposite Monday, I go to my chiropractor. This makes me feel good. When I feel good physically and mentally, I'm my best self. That is self-love. I don't need anyone calling me up telling me that I'm a great guy or you look good and none of that because I work out for myself. I treat myself good. I date myself and I feel good about myself. So I don't need anyone else to buy to, to I don't need anyone else to make me valuable because I value myself. Sometimes we want to be with someone and being with someone we equate that to being valuable because someone desires or someone wants us. But that's not the case. Like, just because someone wants you don't mean that they value you. They may, their value for you may be to use you. That's what you want. If that's what you want, good luck. I'm not saying you're wrong, but I, I just don't roll like that. And lastly, ensure your partner knows your feelings and how they may affect you and how their actions affect you. Yes. So there's a constructive way of saying things. You guys always hear me say there's an Obama way, a Barack Obama way of saying some hard things or some very difficult subjects. And so I just think that, for example, if I have a lover and I want like and I'm like, you know what, you know, I, you know, you would be more desirable if you were a little more fit. Right. But instead of me just saying that, I'm going to follow it up with, you know what? I'm willing to diet with you. I'm willing to work out with you. Or I'm willing to pay for a trainer for you. Whatever the case may be, I'm going to hand in hand go through this process with you. And if she says, I feel good where I'm at. I like seeing myself where I'm at. Then I have to digress. That, or we can come to some kind of compromise. Well, can you just lose a little bit of weight? Instead of 10 pounds, maybe five, you know, or whatever the case may be. And there's just good ways to have conversations. You just can't say you need to lose weight. You know, you're looking fat, you know, or I don't like your hair. Your hair looks horrible. You know, instead of saying, you know what, you know, I don't really like this style, but I really like that style. And I think that style complements you better than this style. See, that sounds a lot better than I don't like. I hate that you look fat. I don't like what you eat. Your breath stinks when you smoke cigarettes. You know, there's a way to, you know, to say things that is not shaming a person. And when you shame someone, that destroys their self-esteem. Whether they take on the chin and, and, and act like it don't hurt, it hurts. It hurts. Even the strongest people, when you try to chip away at their self-esteem you're chipping away at their ego you know and sometimes people are on a thin line with how they feel about themselves so you have to know your partner have open communication and find constructive ways to say some things if there's some change you want to see be willing to change with them if you like look i want you to lose weight say let's let's just say i'm thin i'm dealing with a woman who's a little overweight Okay, baby, look, I would like for you to lose a little weight. You know, if you brought it in, be a little more curvy, you know, man, you could get into this distress, boom, boom, boom. But look, I'm willing to like diet with you. I'm willing to go walking with you. I'm willing to go to the gym with you. I'm willing to do whatever it takes to help you be a better version. If you see that as valuable, you see that? Instead of just talking shit, like, you need to lose weight because you're looking fat. 
you ain't getting in that dress you was in five years ago because you fat. Like, no, that's not what we do. We are here as men, when you have a partner, to build them up and to understand that people sometimes, even if they're projected, they're very strong and very confident. The wrong, the wrong words from the right person can really fuck someone around. It can really mess with them. It can really throw a dent in their armor. And if that's not your intent to hurt them, then find a better way of saying some things. And understand that wanting someone to change to something that you may like, and, and it might be good. It might The change might even be good for them. But you have to understand that you may have to say, I'm going to walk with you with this. I'm going to hold your hand through this process. I'm not just telling you to do that. I'm going to help you in the process. No matter what my role may be, I'm here for you. That sounds better than do it yourself. But what do you guys think? Those are my talking points. This is my conversation. Of course, I could have got into body imaging as far as changing your sexuality, your sex, your gender, and all that. That's not my thing. Um, you guys can have an opinion about that. I'm leaving that subject alone. This is just about self-love, loving how you look. And again, if there's anything that you can do about it, change it. But are you changing it because you want to change or you're changing for someone or you're changing for society? Gotta, gotta know that. There was, um, lastly, there was a one young lady online talking about how her boyfriend wanted her to get a sex to tighten the pussy up. And I was thinking, why would you do that for your boyfriend? Maybe for your husband, but why for your boyfriend? And this is a young lady who didn't have kids. So why exactly do you need to have your vagina, vagina tightened up? Have you had that many? Like, is he saying you've had so many sex partners that he can't feel it? Is his dick too small that he can't feel it? What's really going on here? These are questions you have to ask. And she's actually going to go through with having a surgery. I don't recommend doing shit for altering yourself at all at the behest of someone who's not investing in you in the way of marriage. Fuck that. Why would you do it? What's he trying to say? Either his dick is too small or you don't have so much dick in you that he can't feel the walls. Either way, there's other questions that need to be had other than if that's what he wants, that's what I'm going to do. I didn't think that her self-esteem was so high on that, but that's just my opinion. What do you guys think? You, you, guys, you guys know where to find me, sirinq.com, sirinq on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Catch me on kingspace.net. And don't log off just yet. I'm about to respond to... The text thread, I'm about to turn this video off and go live, answer any questions that were, uh, or any comments that were put in the thread, and also anything that I've just thought about between the time I made this video and the time I've aired it live on Wednesday night. Again, I want to thank you guys for watching me. Any ideas, any subjects that I didn't touch on, please DM me or email me, and, uh, and I will gladly speak on them if I have the knowledge or experience. Okay? Peace. Stay tuned.